In Windows Server 2022, we have a couple of different ways that we can add a new hard drive. This is a virtual machine, so I added the storage in Hyper-V, and now this 5 gigabyte storage will show up as a new computer disk in Computer Management. So I'm going to go to Tools and Server Manager and choose Computer Management. Once I'm in Computer Management, I can click on Disk Management. And now you can see this unallocated five gigabyte partition. So there's a couple of steps I need to do to be able to use this. I'll start by right clicking and choosing online. Next, I need to initialize the drive. So I'll right click again and choose to initialize the disk. Now it's asking me the type of partition style that I would like. I can choose Master Boot Record or GPT for GUID Partition Table. The default now is GPT, although there was a time in previous versions where it defaulted to MBR, but that's only good up to two terabytes. And so most of the time, if you want to have a larger type of volume, then you're going to want to choose the GPT option. So let's go ahead and click OK, and it's going to initialize that drive. And now we see there's 4.98 gigabytes allocated. And part of that reason is there's a little bit of overhead is why it's no longer showing us five gigabytes. And the other is because Microsoft measures storage in the one terabyte, two terabyte, one gigabyte, two gigabyte, that type of thing. Whereas storage manufacturers manufacture storage in the power of two. So in other words, a gigabyte is going to be 1,024 megabytes instead of 1,000 megabytes. So when you translate the way the storage providers provide the size and Microsoft provides the size, they don't equal the same thing. So that's why you end up with a slightly smaller amount than you see here. So I'm going to right click and choose to create a new simple volume and the new volume wizard appears and I click next and now we see the volume size in megabytes. So I'll click next. I'll choose the default E drive, but you could also mount this storage inside of another drive. So for instance, if you needed more space in your C drive, you could mount this into your C drive and add more space. You could also just not assign a drive letter and just assign that at a later time or use it for, say, a backup drive. So I'm going to choose the E drive letter. And now we need to choose the volume formatting. So we have multiple options here as well. FAT32 is typically used in older file systems or file systems that need to communicate with other operating systems, such as if you wanted to communicate, say, between Linux, Macintosh, and Windows. It's just an unlikely scenario in a Windows server. It's more likely to happen, say, in a client with a USB drive that you're passing between computers. So this really isn't something that you would want to use anymore. NTFS is going to be the default new technology file system. It's currently no longer new. It's been around for decades. However, it's still the de facto standard for the formatting of the volume. And it's a very good volume format. REFS allows you to create much larger volumes than you can with NTFS. It also has some self-healing properties. However, it has a couple of drawbacks. One is you can't shrink the volume in case you want to do that in the future. And also, as it gets close to being filled up, it starts having a lot of speed issues. So that's why NTFS is still the default at this time. I can also choose to create a volume label. I'll just call this storage. And I'm going to choose the perform a quick format. That's the faster way to go. If you do the regular format, then it could take several minutes to several hours, depending on the size that you're formatting. And this is typically only used if you're trying to override a lot of data. The quick format doesn't go in and add zeros to every single sector in the hard drive. The quick format just gets rid of the file allocation table or whatever it is that it's using for that particular volume. And then it goes ahead and makes that storage available. You can also enable file and folder compression. What this does is it makes it so you'll end up with, say, almost double the amount of storage, but it'll run much more slowly. So if you decide you would like to use that because you're running short on space, then you can choose that option. You can also choose compression after it's been formatted as well. And I'll go ahead and finish that up. And pretty soon here, you're going to see this showing up as a five gigabyte partition. And there it is. So if I go into my file explorer, then we should see the E drive. 
and there's the E drive. Now it's currently empty. I could add files in. Now there's another way that we can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by deleting the volume. And I'm going to show you another graphical way besides PowerShell and command line, which you can also do. And I'm going to choose to have this drive back to being offline again. Now I'm going to close it and go back into Server Manager. In Server Manager, you're going to see off to the left-hand side, File and Storage Services. And if I click on Disks, I should see that disk once again appear. But I see it under a different menu system. So here is the disk. You see it showing up as 5 gigabytes and offline, although the unallocated, once again, shows up as 4.98. So if I right-click on it, I can choose to bring it online and choose Yes. And once it's online, I'll need to create a volume. So I'll choose Tasks, New Volume, and then go through this wizard. I'm going to choose the defaults that you see here. Once again, the volume size is the same. The drive letter is E, or I could choose those other options that we saw previously. And I can choose under the file system, NTFS or REFS. The FAT32 is not available using this option. It also shows the option in case you're using a 16-bit application. It doesn't allow for any file names longer than eight characters. I'm going to choose Next and Create. So you can see it does the same thing, although the options are a little bit different, but ultimately you end up with the same result. I'm going to click on the five gigabyte disk and we can now see the volume inside the disk. The difference between the volume and the disk is the disk is the physical size of the drive. I can partition that up into multiple different volumes using multiple different drive letters. Or I can just choose all of the storage, as I did here, and just create it with a single drive letter. Now, if I go back into File Explorer, once again, there is our E volume. Formatting and partitioning are easily done using multiple options in your Windows 2022 server.